Welcome friends of the Dice Never Lie Gaming Network. My name is DM Marathustra. It is my pleasure to have you join us this evening. Once again, thank you for clicking. I hope you enjoy today's video. In December of 2022, Hasbro, Wizard of the Coast released that they would be introducing a new OGL 1.1 that would be coming out sometime early in 2023. But on the 4th of January, it was leaked. People are starting to see some of the language, including a 900 word OGL A or 5th edition that has increased to a 9000 word OGL 1.1 for 1 D&D. &D. And what does OGL 1.1 do to affect content creators? It's going to start producing three different tiers of commercial content creators. The first and lowest tier just has people reporting that they are producing something, what they are producing, and essentially that during the year 2023, they made no more than $50,000 in those sales using the OGL 1.1. The second tier is for those folks who are selling more than $50,000, but less than $750,000 worth of content. At the highest tier, we're going to have those who are selling over $750,000 in content. These are the people who are going to be paying royalties to Wizards of the Coast. About 20 or so content creators. Do you think they could be creating the same mistakes that they did in the past with this new OGL? If you create something like OGL 1.1, someone might actually try to challenge it. Is there anyone large enough to stand up to Hasbro long enough to actually get through the litigation and get a judge to give a decision? Or you will set precedents, but somebody has to take it to court first. And that's a big question right now. Because otherwise people might just leave. That's where you get the schism, the created Paizo, Pathfinder, and where they make all the same mistakes over again. Does Critical Role care to stand up against Hasbro? Could Pazzo? Could any of the 20? We've already seen Critical Role has left these things behind in order to create new Katoa. Their very nature of Darrington Press is already doing it. The Taldore Reborn is their publication, at least partly leaving wizards behind what will wizards force them to do when their new ogl starts to take revenue from these companies what unforeseen things do you think wizards is going to create while back we heard about the shareholder meeting where it was mentioned that dungeons and dragons was under monetized now we're starting to see it where this OGL may become a direct threat to some of the great producers of content that are out there operating under a license that says, hey, you're a small fish in a big sea. If you can get enough to survive, you can create stuff for the people who want it. Us, the players. Wizards of the Coast is going to kill that because they are greedy with Microsoft executives at the helm. It's hard to see where this is going to take D&D. We're still really early in the creation of one D&D, but we can start to see where the language is taking things. One D&D was supposed to unify D&D, but really, it seems like one D&D was meant to unify it so they could bring all things back around to the collection of the almighty dollar. We have Chris Cox and Cynthia Williams. Without them, we might have actually had people who cared about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Here's a critical role, making their own game. 